I'm going to start with energy because that's one that's probably the most obvious to people. You see lights on, you experience heat changes throughout the day, and it also is one of the greatest opportunities for financial improvement and environmental improvement at the same time. Take for example, at the Washington State Convention and Trade Center, they installed over 6,000 energy efficiency lightning fixtures. Now you might be thinking, oh my god, 6,000 fixtures, that's going to be really expensive. But you know what? Their financial savings was that they, they saved over $120,000 and had a return on investment and a payback within one year. And their sustainability benefit it was the equivalent of saving about 2 million kilowatt hours or 1,406 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. The city of Hong Kong and many cities around the world and around the country are switching out a lot of their stoplights to LED lights. In Hong Kong, for example, they switched from more conventional lighting to LEDs and they were able to save about $48,500 annually from doing that. So it just makes sense from a financial perspective. But they also reduced their kilowatt usage by about 7.6 million kilowatt hours annually. Natural gas is also a big area to look at when you're looking at ways to reduce costs and your environmental benefit. And U.S. Steel's Mintac plant is a great case study of this. Now, a lot of organizations, the first thing you want to do is do an energy assessment. So U.S. Steel's plant, they went under an energy assessment and they realized that if they upgraded their burners for their natural gas, that they could save a ton of money. In fact, they were able to save over $790,000 annually in natural gas usage by just replacing the burners and putting forth some of those implementation ideas that came out of the energy assessment. Their ROI was 1.5 years and it reduced their consumption by 95,000 million BTUs. Now you may not understand that terminology, but if you just think about it for your own organization, whether it's a, doing that first energy assessment can really pay dividends. Iron Mountain, which is known best for a place to hold and store your critical files for an organization, both electronically and hard copy. You don't really think of them as a super innovative renewable energy type company. Well, their organization looked at ways. They thought, "Wow, where could we? You know, where we could you know put some renewable energy and also help with our financial savings at the same time?" Well, they installed over 1.8 megawatts of solar panels across six facilities it ended up meeting 70% of their electricity, which is like the equivalent of conserving 25,000 gallons of gasoline a year. And it had a net present value of over $5 million with no upfront capital costs. They did a power purchasing agreement or PPA. This is a way that an organization was able to not only shift from conventional electricity to renewables, but find a stable source of power they also had a better return on investment and obviously a much better impact for the environment. A much larger project, the Fresno Yosemite International Airport, they're following a, a big trend that a lot of quote unquote green airports are going after. They installed over two megawatts of ground mounted solar panels across their airport facility. They save close to 29,000 pounds of CO2 equivalent a year. And the panels provide about 40% of the electricity and the payback over the next 20 years is predicted to be about $13 million. So this is, again, another case where someone is using renewable energy, using solar power, not only to provide price stability and a shift in renewables, but it's also got a better financial payback to the bottom line. Amazon.com, you know, you might be thinking of, well, gosh, their, their biggest impact are the boxes that you're unpacking when you get something, you know, delivered to your house. Well, they actually use a ton of energy for their Amazon Web Services and for doing cloud storage. And one of their areas that obviously is a huge energy suck is keeping all those data centers cool. So one of the really innovative ways that they looked at it from using it energy, like where is our waste heat and how could we use that and turn that into a positive resource for their company? So Amazon used their excess waste heat from their Weston building, which served as a regional telecom hub to use it, actually take that heat out of there, recycle it, pipe it back into their four block campus. And they were actually able to save about 4 million kilowatt hours of electricity over the course of that time. And it saved them over $210,000 in their energy bills annually. So this is just think of 
waste heat as energy that's just going up. Well, they were able to capture it, put it back in, and use that to heat their own facilities. And it really saved the bottom line at the same time. Another innovative one on energy was just the Fremont Brewing. Now, if you think about the brew making process, you have to use a lot of heat to you know, brew the beer. And then it's just typically vented out of the brewery. Well, Fremont Brewery, they found that they were just venting off all this heat. Meanwhile, there was a yoga studio, you know, pretty much right next door that was using Bikram and they needed heat. So they thought to themselves, well, maybe we could go talk to this, uh, this yoga studio and find out, you know, do they, for their Bikram studio, would they want our waste heat? And could we cut them a deal where we could, you know, sell it to them at a price that was going to be lower than what they would pay for natural gas or whatever they're using for the heat um, off their market rate? And they were able to do that. And so they found a way that they were taking what was their waste heat and recycling it back and using it to another organization that needed that heat. And they were able to turn, you know, it into a revenue center for them. It was not just off-gassing that heat straight up into the atmosphere, but also their, their yoga studio next door got the additional community benefit of having a lower additional heat cost to make up for whatever they needed to heat their yoga studio. Many of these examples that I've given you are for large organizations. You might be thinking, well, what can I do within my own organization? I may be a small business or a, a regional facility where I don't have control over the capital expenditures and the facilities won't work with me. Well, there's a number of different things that if you're watching this that you can do. From the left-hand side, just starting with an energy audit, looking at ways you could reach out to your utility, see where their incentives, see where their free programs are for things like motion sensors and you know different types of digital thermostats. There's all different ways that you can reduce your energy usage, and all of them have a very short payback. So you don't need to be looking at massive, you know, investments in solar power or burners like we've done in these examples. There are any number of ways that you can dramatically reduce your energy usage, save money, and do better for the environment at the same time.